Okay, so I'm going to give you a little tour of my studio. This is the artwork on my door. It's made by Madame Talbot, bought for me by a dear friend. If you want to find more of her fabulous work, then you can find her on madametalbot.com. Let's have a look inside. So, you can see here my work desk. I'm lucky enough to have um, this really beautiful window and beautiful view and the light spills out onto the desk which means I can work in lovely natural light. So I'll give you a little look around and then I'll show you a few more things in detail afterwards. So here is my altar, which I sit at, at the beginning of the working time. You can see there my buffalo skin drum, which was made by Dory Joy, who's a local maker. It's a lovely, deep sound. I've tried to make a video of it, but the sound just doesn't carry through the speaker on this phone, I'm afraid. So I'm going to make other videos about particular objects on my altar, particular things that come into my space and how I use them and how I work with them. But just in brief, the things upon my altar today, and these these are always here. This is a bowl of cave bear bones, which are between 40,000 and 100,000 years old. They're fossilised cave bear bones. You can see a knife there, cutting the ties. Now, every time I light candles on my altar, I light three. I light one for the goddess, one for my community, and one for myself, for my own womb wisdom. This is a lotus which represents to me both my womb, my yoni, and my higher self. You can see my incense burner there, and the crystal that you can see here, this ball, for me represents the earth and blood so if I want to connect in with that I will hold this and meditate with it. Uh, this is a seal skull which was gifted to me by someone who was began as a customer but has become a friend. I'll talk more about this and how it came to me and how I've been working with it in another video but as you can see I've begun painting it a little bit for ink. You can see here are three tarot cards that I drew this morning from the Carolyn Hillier deck. And every morning I sit here, I light candles, I drum and I sing. So sitting here and beginning my day in this way does two things for me. It helps me move from my everyday headspace where I'm a mother and obviously I run a household and do all the normal work -a day things and brings me into a more calm, more magical headspace. The drumming also fills the room with a different vibration. I light incense. The incense I'm using particularly at the moment is made by a local maker. It's otherworldly incense and it has a really, really beautiful smell. And we know, we all know that smell is so powerful for bringing us into different head spaces. And also at times I'll sit with different objects to bring me into the right kind of headspace to be working on whatever it is that I'm working with. Okay, so this is a closer look at my drum. That's a piece of gorse from Dartmoor, near where I live. This is buffalo fur on the handle. I've added my own pieces to personalise it. This is a tawny owl feather that my son found and gave to me. This is a fox bone because fox is an animal that I work with quite closely. A companion of mine. 
there's a little piece of amber on here and my associations with amber are written about quite a lot so if you want to find out more about that you can read some of my facebook posts these are bone beads this is a tiny little pouch containing the ash from the fires that we worked around when I went on a weekend with Carolyn Hillier. So they're imbued with all the spell, make, spell making that happened there. And this is a tiny slither of snake skin because snake is another animal that I work with intimately. And this is uh, another feature of my workshop. My dear Mim, who often comes in to accompany me with my work. She's uh, sometimes quality control. She sits on my desk and inspects my work at times. <laughs> okay, so this is my work desk, as I said. What you can see here is a work in progress. I've sort of put some elements together because I'm thinking about making a wall hanging with this fox skull. What you can also see on this desk is quite a lot of little balls of beads that have been separated out and a little junk bowl for wire. Lots of little bits of wire get cut off and then they can be reused later. These are my sculpting tools. And this is what I call, I heard another creator calling this bead soup. Because it's putting different beads together to see how the colours combine and how the shapes work and things like that. I have this mirror on my desk because when I'm working I find it quite useful to be able to put a necklace on or some earrings or just to see how they look, see how they hang. Uh, up here we've got pieces of PMC drying. And I put them up there so they're out of the way because they can be quite fragile when they're drying. I don't really want them to get broken or it's always a bit disheartening when you've spent hours sculpting something. So what we have here is tools, pliers and nippers and things like that. And then this is one of my favourite drawers. This is random treasures drawer. Um, I've got a design here. I'm working with Tati Denehe and making something out of clay so it's slightly bigger than I usually make. Here are a few more works in progress in here. This is an arrowhead I've been working on and there's some other bits and pieces that are still incubating. So over here are the bead trays. Whenever I get a new piece or get, get beads from people I separate them out. I used to have them all in one big drawer um, but that was very difficult in the end when my collection got very big. So they're separated into bone beads and metal beads and shell beads. And there is a kind of logic to it. <laughs> I know where the bits and pieces are. This is my blackboard. You know, so I know what I'm getting up to. Um, more drawers here with threads and other various bits and pieces in. Various tools, sculpting tools, paintbrushes, hammers, brushes for brushing the PMC after it's been fired. I've got another beautiful piece of artwork here. This is done by a friend of mine who's no longer with us. It's a painting of a place I used to live in Yeovil, a beautiful hill called Brindon Hill with four lime trees on the top. A piece of artwork by Susan Seddon. And then another piece here by Carolyn Hillier. I find it really inspiring to have artworks like this around me. I really, I feel like I've got people around me watching my work, supporting me in what I do. So underneath the beads we have lots of baskets here. This is a basket of various materials and little bits of fur and this is also a basket of materials and lace and bits of fur some coconut balls here and some thread this is a basket I made myself from ivy in the absence of having some willow I was doing a performance with my group Bone Song um, called La Loba and we wanted to have um, something that gave the impression of fire and we weren't allowed flames in the place where we were performing so we 
we made this basket and put it with electric tea lights inside to give that flickering feeling and it's filled with the sheep bones collected from various places that we also used in the performance. This is a basket of fox bones and also here there are some eco dye experiments, one I did on paper with my son just to see how it worked, how they came out. Some of them came out really, really beautifully and I've been using that on material in some of my bags. There's also some bits of silk here and various notebooks and things like that. This is the sofa where I sit when I'm sometimes contemplating something. I often sit here to draw. But mostly it's actually used for when people come and they want to, they've come to receive a piece or they've come to talk about a piece. And this is where we sit and drink tea. The notebooks that you can see at the top there are the notebooks that I've been writing in since I was 14 years old. And these are other bits and pieces that I've, that I've made or that inspire me. Up here you can see a piece of artwork by Naomi Cornock, who's a fabulous intuitive artist who goes to special places, really feels into them and then, and then creates drawings from them. Other inspiring things are books by Brian Froud and old, old, old drawings. This is a definite favourite of mine, this piece of artwork. It's Mayan inspired. I've done a lot of research on it and I can't find if this is a particular goddess of theirs or not, but it always makes me think of mama strength and the mama talking to the god. Here's a staff that I made, a protection staff. This is one of the very first things that I made magically for myself. And I might talk about that in a bit more detail in a different video. So it's very rare that a piece stays in the studio for very long, but obviously I need a way of displaying them so that if people do come, they can see what's about. So, so I have pieces displayed. That's the drum there, the deerskin drum. I tend to use more my buffalo skin drums, got a lovely deep sound. But the deerskin drum is appropriate for different things. This is my stereo, which I regard as a very important thing to have in my studio. Although sometimes I do work in silence, I really like to have music so that I can dance around to move the energy through my body or to move the energy in the space. If I'm stuck at point in a design, I might dance to free up my mind and help me think a bit more clearly. Basket of various bits of leather. This bowl of snakeskin. I'll make a separate video about how that snakeskin came into my possession and how I had to work it to clear its energy and reignite it. This basket has these are beads that I bought before I began thinking more consciously about how I was acquiring my materials. And since I have these beads, I do still use them, but I don't buy any more new beads anymore. I have things that I include in my photographs, like this piece of material that, that a gift was wrapped in, and then these uh, skeletal leaves, which I also use in photographs or sometimes in packaging. Here's a bowl that had a crack in it, and I've been having a look at seeing if I can, you know, make something of that. This is the place where I keep my stamps. So all of my packaging is hand stamped. I designed my logo and then had it made into a stamp by the English Stamp Company and they did the same for my website. So that's a local company. And then these are bought stamps which I use for my cards. So all my business cards and my packaging cards are all hand stamped. This is where I keep my packaging. 
So this is all recycled business cards that I hand stamp and recycled envelopes and recycled cards that I write personalised messages in for my customers. So finally, what I thought I'd just show you here are two of the drawers here because one of the ethoses of my work is to have a very low burden on the earth. So this bottom drawer is filled with envelopes to be reused. I've been r running my business as Earth Smoke for I think about three years now and I have only ever once bought a new envelope. And this other drawer is filled with tissue paper. Again, I reuse all tissue paper, so anyone who gets a gift wrapped in tissue paper, I'm there grabbing it, saying, please, can I use that? So all of this is going to be reused. And then also just just anything natural, wrapping, you know, Christmas time, birthdays, if people don't want it, I take it, put it in this drawer, and I have never bought any new tissue paper. It's all reused. Okay, so that's the Temple Studio. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little tour. If you're a patron or you're thinking of becoming a patron and there's something that you saw in this tour that you'd like to know a little bit more about or how I work with different things or how I came across particular things, then feel free to ask. Certain patrons will have access to a private Facebook group where you can ask questions like that. Either way. I hope you enjoyed this tour. Thank you.